everyone, I'm Allie with the Potomac Bead Company and I'm going to show you today how to make bead frames out of seed beads. So bead frames have been popular for us, they kind of show off a different stone or you can gather some little beads in between and we have them in a bunch of different um, colors and some pewter and I'm going to show you how to make one today out of seed beads. To do this we're going to be using 15 O seed beads for the interior of the loop and then we're going to be using 11 O Delicas. The ones that I have already made here have the Pacific Opal and a 4mm Swarovski as well as the AB uh, crystal in the 4mm Swarovski. It has the galvanized silver 15 O's and then the gold lined crystal in Delicas. I also have just an empty ring to show you to kind of reference as we're making it. And I'm going to be using a Tibetan agate oval and the ones that I'm going to be using are silver lined crystal in the 15 O and I'm gonna use an opaque chocolate in my Delica bead. In addition to my beads, I'm gonna need a size 10 or a size 12 English beading needle. I'm gonna have my thread burner and .006 wildfire beading thread, and I am using a white thread to go with that. So to start out with my project, I have my beading thread cut, and I've cut right about 30 inches of thread. I'm going to put on a Delica bead that's not in the color that I'm using, that's going to be my stop bead. Normally a stop bead is going to be at the end of your thread. I'm going to take that actually to the middle of my thread because I'm going to be working with one half and then we're going to flip over and work with the other side. My needle is going to go through that Delica bead two times and I'm going to bring it through. The Tibetan oval, Tibetan agate oval that I'm using is an 18 by 25. So depending on what size bead you want to use and if you want to have a little bit of space around it, this one here is an oval shape, you're going to use a different number of seed beads here. The earrings that I did, as well as the ring here, um, those had 40 seed beads as my starting. We're going to end up more with about 70 beads. Whatever number you start with, you want to make sure that you start with an even number because that's going to work better for our rounded peyote that we're going to be doing. So to start out, I have my needle and my thread done and my stop bead on, and you're just going to feed a bunch of your 15s onto your needle. If you know for sure that you want to do the same size as the earrings that are the example, again, it's just 40 and you can count your 40 as you pick them up. Another thing I always do before I get to the very end is recount my center line because you want to make sure that you do have that even amount and that you have exactly the right amount that you need. So if you have an odd amount, it doesn't turn out very well. So you want to double count as you're doing that. And I'm picking up all these crystalline silver beads and I'm going to let them drop down right next to my stop bead. So I'm going to continue to put those on till I get the circumference and a little bit bigger than the circumference of my bead here. So here I've done um, a bunch of my 15 O's that I have on my thread and I've actually taken some off already because I got a little excited and beaded too many on. Um, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that it is going to wrap around your bead or your sets of beads in a case that you're using multiples. And when I have this, I'm going to make sure that it's a little bit bigger than the bead, but I don't want it to be too much bigger. I do want a little bit of play around mine because I'm going to kind of create some space with it. So this is perfect. And then you're just going to count to make sure what your count is that you have an even amount. So I have 76 beads on my little rope chain here on my 15 O's. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go from my stop bead towards the long portion and I'm going to go back through a number of beads and what this is going to do is round out my project. So I'm just going to pick say the first seven or so beads. It really doesn't matter how many you go through and I'm going to round that out. That's going to make my loop again before I get too far. I'm just going to check my loop and make sure that's as big as I want it and that looks perfect because again I do want a little bit of play in between. And now what I'm going to do is start peyote. If you're not sure of peyote you can check out our other videos and you can learn peyote that way but it's rather simple. All we're going to be doing is with the 15 O's again I'm going to be picking up a 15 O, skipping the next 15 O that's in the line right here and going through the next one. Pull my thread through, nice and tight, and then it's going to look like a 2-1 pattern. So I have two beads on, then one. I'm going to pick up another seed bead, skip the next 15-0 that's already on my thread, 
and go through the second one and again get that nice pattern of two one two I'm through one again and I'm gonna add another bead and you're gonna continue this peyote pattern the whole way around the circle and on goes another one so I'm gonna continue this going through and adding my peyote on this whole first row with the 15 O's. After this row, we get to switch to the 11 O's, so you get to switch to a little bit of a bigger bead. So that's always nice, because then you don't feel like you're straining as much to see with that 15 O. And I'm just gonna continue, like I said, going the whole way around my line. You do wanna make sure to try to keep your beads to the outside of your frame so that the new ones that you're adding are to the outside. That will prevent some additional curvature that you do not want. So again, I'm gonna continue on going the whole way around till I get back to the start. So I've gone the whole way around my project with my 15 O's. And what I'm gonna do is step up to start the next row. To start the next row, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go through the first bead that I added in my second row. So I'm coming out of here, my last bead that I went through, and I'm gonna step up by going through my first 15 out that I put in on this row. And the row that I just did is actually row three. Whenever you start peyote, you're doing two rows at once. So I started, my first one that I strung, or strung was actually rows one and two. So I've just completed three, and I went back through the first bead in row three. Now what I'm gonna do, I've changed my color palette a tiny bit. I'm gonna use the opaque and the chocolate. So I'm using that opaque ivory white, and I'm gonna pick up a bead. And now you have a nice line to follow that you're going through all the beads that are sticking up in your peyote row. So I'm going through all these beads that were right on the 15 O's. So I'm going around now, and I'm just adding my delicas right in the place that's open for me in between my 15 O's. And this one, this row is a lot more easy and a lot simpler to follow because you already have a line established that you're going through with those 15 O's. So you're not having to look and count and figure out exactly what you're doing. It's already there and it's already started for you. You just have to go the whole way around the circle. And then once you're around the circle, and it's gonna kind of stretch it out and make it a little bit more of a circle shape rather than this kind of funky shape that it's having. The bigger the loop, the funkier shape it's gonna look like until you get it nice and tight and secure to make your nice round disc. So I'm gonna keep going, attaching my delicas right along. And as I attach them then, I'm gonna go the whole way back to the start here. And when I get to the start, I'm gonna step up and I'll remind you how to do that as well. So I have one more to add in my row here of my Delica beads. I'm gonna go through my last 15 O, and at the same time, I'm gonna go up through the first Delica bead that I added on to this row number four. And now I have my four rows of my peyote complete, and I'm gonna do a fifth row with the same color of Delica beads. So I'm just gonna go around the row, just like we're doing, and I'm just gonna repeat adding a bead and sewing through my next Delica in line. And that's gonna create my second row of my Delica beads. So as I'm finishing my second row of Delicas here, I'm just gonna show that step up again that I have that Delica bead on. I'm going through the last Delica bead of the first row of Delicas and then I'm gonna jump up to the first Delica bead that I put on in the second row. And that's gonna complete that second row of my Delica beads. For my next row, I'm actually going to use the chocolate brown color, so I'm gonna switch off colors, and I'm going to use that as well. That white I'm just gonna push off to the side because I will use that again. And I'm gonna do my third row here with my chocolate color to pick up some of those different colors in my Tibetan stone. So you're gonna go around, and you can change up colors, you can do all the same color, it's up to you. But I'm gonna go around with that deep chocolate brown, 
and add that in as well to every other space and get that look. So I'm finishing my third row here of my Delicas and again I'm going through the second row and through the first bead of that third row, so through my first brown bead, and my thread is gonna come out of my brown bead. What I'm actually gonna do now is take my needle off the thread that I'm working with, and I'm gonna to switch to the inside and add my thread onto my longer portion, because remember we started in the middle. I'm just gonna take my stop bead off. Sometimes that's easier said than done. So what I'm gonna do is attach my needle on, and then I'm gonna sew my needle back through my stop bead in order to take that off. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start peyote with delicas basically coming from the inside. Because what that's gonna do is then we're gonna round it out and you can see really well with the black one here that our silver delicas, or our silver 15 o's, sorry, silver lined, are gonna be on the inside of our loop and our frame. And the delicas then will present themselves to the outside. So if you have trouble getting your stop bead off, what you can do is actually sew back through the delica bead. and sew back through to take it off both two times, sewing back through to take off that delica. So you can see it's starting to take shape here and I have my Tibetan agate bead in the middle and my stop bead is off again and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start some of my peyote with my delicas on the inner row as well. So I have my peyote on the delicas on the inner row or on the outer row and I'm gonna start them on the inner row. And what I'm gonna do is pick up and go with my cream color and then go back just like as we were doing and I'm gonna go through my Delica beads and every other one, the one, or my 15 O's. So I'm going through every other one that's sticking up and putting them right here, through and pulling. And you're gonna go the whole way around this middle. So you're going, so you're going the whole way around that inner line of R15. I'm showing as I'm going around here, what's going to naturally happen is almost you're forming like a little tire here that has an inner groove that it's going to catch on to. Because the 15 O's are smaller, they want to go towards the back, hence they're going to be in the middle of your circle. So as you're building this inner row here, what is actually going to happen is those 15 O or those 11 O delicas that you're adding are going to be pulling up on the project rather than laying into the middle because there's not enough room for them in the middle because there only is, is enough room for the 15 O's and the 11 O's are a little bit bigger and that's how we're going to get those 11 O delicas to pull to the outside of the project. And If you do see them kind of sitting on an end while you're working with it because it is a tight space, you want to give a nice tight pull so it locks right down in to that 15 O. So I'm done my inner row here, my first one, and I've stepped up to get ready to do my next row. And all I'm gonna do now is start by adding my brown, and I'm going through the beads along that intersection that's sticking up, and I'm adding the brown. And as you do this, you'll notice those 15 o silvers even going further down kind of into the middle and you'll notice that curvature happening where they're coming up to meet one another. So as I'm getting done my row here, I've increased, so I'm getting ready. It almost looks like to add my next row, but instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be sewing and connecting my brown beads. Remember I added them on the third row on the first one, and I've added them on the second row on this inner one. And what I'm doing is I'm zigzagging back and forth, sewing right along the line, grabbing on to just that brown bead. What that's gonna do is that's gonna round out my project completely and make it more of a tire or an O shape. And as you're doing this here, you can see it pulling it together and it's getting nice and tight. And I'm going in here and I'm pulling it together. And I'm gonna seam it the whole way along the sides going from the inner to the outer and going inner and outer and going the whole way right along the edge to round out my So loop. here I am just continuing round. Again, we're not adding any beads. 
we're just zigzagging. So I'm going through a bead on the right, bead on the left, bead on the right, and then the bead on the left. And I'm just going the whole way around my ring here, zigzagging between those. And what that's doing is it's that forming that nice ring that's going to sit right around my oval bead there. So I'm here at the end of my loop and I've gone the whole way around zigzagging. I'm just going to finish my zigzag here. I'm going through my last bead that's going to join those together. And you can see that nice kind of brown line the whole way along. And my loop still does have a little bit of a curvature to it. That's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to attach my bead in the middle of it. I do want my bead to sit off a little bit and I will make it a tiny bit teardrop shape, which you can do just with your fingers kind of pressing things down in place. And I do want it to be able to hang and to put something in there. I may even put a little bead on each side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to that top of the point that I created. I'm going back along my beads here. And then what you're gonna do is, I'm gonna attach that bead here into the bottom so that it sits right at the end of my little bead frame here. Again, you can make them smaller. When you make them smaller, they're a little bit easier to control the roundedness of it. And I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to drop it right down through the middle of my ring that I've made. I'm pulling my thread down. Just get rid of my tail a little bit here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my oval right here in the middle. To keep my shape, I do want to fill it a little bit, but I still like that teardrop shape that it's getting with that oval effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of my darker colors. Actually, what I'll do is I'll pick up, I have an 8 sitting right here, and I'm going to do two 8 -0s. I'm going to do an 8 and this bead here has a hole, so I am going to run my needle and thread through my bead. And that's going to sit my bead right in the middle. Then I'm going to put an 8 on the bottom. And then I'm going to sew through the bottom of my loop here. Right across the bottom, you're just going to kind of wiggle your needle. This is why I like to have a size 10 needle rather than a 12 because you can do that. And that's going to create my little loop here. And it just takes a little bit of playing with to get that to sit down. But that's creating my bead frame that I have a little bit extra off to the sides. I'm going to reinforce that by going back up through. So I'm going to go through one of my Delica beads here at the bottom. And I'm just going to sew right through one of the Delica beads right here at the base at the bottom. And then I'm going to go through the middle again. Pick up that 11 o or that 8 o and back up through my bead. When I come out the bead and out the 8 o before I go back through the top, I'm going to give a nice tight pull. Kind of tighten that up a little bit and pull that in. And I'm going to go back up through the top. And I'm going to create a loop of which to hang in. So there's my little bead hanging out in the middle there, and it's going to be more of a pendant style. And all I'm going to do then is just make a simple loop. You can even use a jump ring if you want, but I'll just do a simple loop out of my Delicas. I'll use my brown delicas here to make my loop and I'm just going to make a little loop big enough that I can hang it from a pendant. And I have it going on here. I have enough that I can hang it from my pendant and then I'm going to round it out by going back down through that same center line. That's going to round it out to make a loop that I can hang that pendant on. I'm going to pull my thread back to the side here and I'm going to tie it off with my original little thread Now that there. I have my two threads, all I'm going to do is I tied them together. I'm going to burn them off and burn them down a little bit using them together. And then I have my pendant ready to go and ready to wear. So you can do the loops in all different sizes. Um, the bigger you get, the harder it is a little bit to control. I like to make them again about 40 wide that you can do and you can play around with the different ones, wear them together, add things in the middle. That's kind of up to you. 
But thanks a lot for watching. If you get a chance, check us out online at potomacbeads.com. Go to our locations page, and we'd love to see you in any of our locations that we have. Also, if you can, you can check out the rest of our YouTube videos, like us on Facebook. And if you can't get to one of our stores, you can always shop online at thebeadco.com. Thanks a lot for watching.